Well, good morning, everybody. It's Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside, and welcome to Somewhat Daily Tarot and Rune for the 26th day of February 2020. Well, we have an eight energy, so a higher sense of leadership, a higher awareness of things, more awareness of the greater picture um, instead of simply uh, a narrow, a more narrow focus. Uh, the eights about practical matters. Uh, it's about the god Tyr. I think Tiwa is one of the runes in the, uh, the 17th rune, actually, an eight energy of the Elder Futhark. So, uh, you know, there you're talking the spiritual warrior within. So it's that level of, of leadership and that level of awareness uh, where you're willing to be the spiritual warrior for, for not just yourself, but for others to speak truth to power and to set things right. Most everything is the same today um, as it was yesterday. Um, still, we're in Mercury retrograde. So again, um, you know, communications can be affected of all kinds. But allow the, the, the perception to loosen, if you would. Um, whatever you think you know, question it. Uh, just sort of let the, 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 the focus on all of that soften a little bit during this time. And don't hold so fast to beliefs. You may find during this time or when it's all over, all said and done, that enough information will come your way that maybe makes you either either just maybe retain the same belief structure, but maybe look at it maybe a little more realistically. Something, but something like that is going to happen here, I think, with this, with this latest Mercury retrograde. Uh, again, Moon's still where it was. First house, Pisces. That's going to move throughout the day, but it's going to remain in, or not Pisces, I'm sorry, Aries. It's going to remain in Aries. So, you know, beginning new projects, you know, and, and with the extra energy, you might, you know, get a little impatient. So try to be aware of that and guard against that. Uh, sun's still 12th house, Pisces. Everything happening the same way there. Uh, la, da, 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 da. Let's see. Uh, again, still trying the North Node. The, the nodes are having still some effect today. Uh, someone new could enter your life today that, that supports your progress um, because you may feel a little bit uh, thwarted. Uh, Mercury has got some uh, newer aspects today from yesterday. Still 12th house Pisces. Intuition is still high. Inward focus is still recommended, but you might feel like you can't make any progress today. Uh, there's a semi-square with Venus, and so balance just may feel off. Uh, it, ha it could have to do with uh, how we interact with others, too, so that may be involved with that, uh, given that it is Mercury, so, and it is retrograde. So some of that relationships might just be a little bit affected. You can't really, uh, if, you're, if you're involved in a group type of a project or, or some type of group or relationship involvement in something, it might just not flow as well today. Uh, sextile Mars, uh, a decision may be need may need to, may, may need to be made though, and you may need to be assertive. Uh, there may be some leadership called for, but again, uh, you know things might be not as uh, carved in stone as you think they are, and so just be aware of that. Uh, again, ha loosen your perception, loosen that hold, and allow for maybe just another viewpoint to come in and another perspective to inform. Um, let's see, uh, Mars 10th house, uh, Capricorn, um, ambition still strong and a change in career could still be happening. That's been going on since the first of the year or maybe since the end of December, maybe of, of last year. I've been seeing a lot of career oriented things happening. Uh, and, uh, the opposition between the Mar and Mars and the North Node though, that's still in effect, it's still strong right now and a change in direction is definitely necessary. So that's why all this, you can make, you know, you can either be stymied by Mercury retrograde or you can make it work for you. And I just say, why not make it work for you? You know, witches do this all the time in magic. Uh, you know, some days are not as favorable as others for magic. Uh, sometimes the moon's not right. Sometimes there's a weird aspect in the sky. If you're, if you go so far as to look at that before you decide what you're going to do and when you're going to do it, because you want to make sure you have the best time available, you know, so all of the energies are supporting you in your endeavor. Well, you know, if something isn't, you can always shore it up with something else to offset the, the impact. And that's all I'm really saying. Work with the Mercury retrograde in a way that puts you in control of it instead of it in control of you. 
the same issue with Uranus, uh, same issue with uh, uh, Saturn, reassessment of relationships, same issue with Uranus, the semi-square with Neptune. It may lessen a little bit uh, in the afternoon today uh, in terms of intensity, but, you know, maybe some of the truth that we've been ignoring, <laughs> the underlying con that's being played, uh, maybe we're starting to wake up to that. Maybe it, we're just, uh, it's just becoming too difficult to ignore it any longer. Maybe what, why that's lessening, although it may just sort of, you know, ebb and flow throughout the day. I don't know. I haven't paid that much attention to it. I just know that uh, uh, we have a chance now with a trine with the south node in Uranus for our true purpose to be revealed. And we just need to be aware that, that sometimes things happen behind the scenes that that manipulate us and make us believe things. Uh, you know, to say we're, we're experiencing one right now where, you know, those in the government are saying, oh, yes, including the guy in the Oval Office. Oh, yeah, you know, the coronavirus, no big deal. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a big deal. Now, it may be uh, that people get through it, you know, but at the same time, you know, without too much happening in this country, but I doubt it. I mean, it's it's a it's a virus. <laughs> it's new. We aren't ready for this. And because they took away the pandemic control group and they fired them two years ago, uh, then that's you know we don't have anybody there. All of the liaisons with the different agencies, the CIA, the national security, uh, the, the the national security uh, team, all of those people, no more liaisons. They fired them them as well, as if somehow this just isn't important. Well, you can see that it is. It's spreading quite rapidly, and, and uh, uh, people are dying from it. It doesn't mean that overall that's what's going to happen, because we don't know. Uh, a lot of it's going to depend on how healthy you are, I suppose, just like any kind of flu. The flu is, da is dangerous. It is. It's dangerous. And we're, we're just, you know, our immune systems are often compromised, and, you know, a lot of, a lot of not particularly well people around. So... You know, you worry uh, that that we're not going to be able to, our immune systems won't be able to fight these things off without help, you know. So if you feel like you got to go get a, uh, if you haven't had a flu shot and that's what you want to do, then go do it. You know, just do it. And and don't don't become confused. Uh, this, is, this is serious times right now. Because as the CDC has indicated, it's not about if, it's when. And we unfortunately have people in, 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 in positions of authority over us now who are as clueless as they come and make all the wrong decisions. They, they make decisions that, I mean, can you imagine letting, you know, a dozen people uh, come back on a plane uh, filled with 300 passengers and not tell them that they, that they could be carriers? Who does that? How stupid. It, it's, 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 it's not just... You know, the, the sad part is it's not just stupid. It's not just stupidity. It's criminal. I mean, can you imagine when all, if all this turns out to, to if, it, if it turns out badly, the lawsuits? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, this is bad. So just the, just the fact that we don't have anybody there that, that can actually make the right decisions. That's the worst of this. So, so you have a con in play. That we're supposed to believe that we can put our faith and trust in these people, and we can't. And it, and, and I know that it's always been true to some extent, no matter who's there. You know that you're going to have nonsense go on, but the level of it this go round, <laughs> yeah, this isn't good. So anyway, the cards have been showing it, the astrology's been showing it. So. Again, you know, make work, Mercury retrograde work for you and loosen the bonds of <laughs> the bonds you have towards your own perception about things. <clears throat> Allow some of that to uh, just give yourself a chance to rethink it. You know, just rethink everything and uh, make sure that you're really on the right track. It, may, it might need a little adjustment. So in any event, let's go ahead and take our first three cards and see if it's going to go ahead and support all this or if it's going to be the outlier today. So. And as always, I'm going to take the 13th card each time for randomness sake. I did not have to go to jury duty today. Although there is court today, I just wasn't, my number didn't come up. <laughs> so we have an eight energy, an eight numerology for strength. 
major arcana card. We're getting we're getting at least one a day. It's very rare when we don't. Oftentimes we get two. When we get three, we really don't need to take a fourth card. <laughs> but and I got I think I did three last week. I started to write all these down so I can go back and look. I really need to have it in a just in a, a a master sheet I can keep right here though. I've put it down in a in a, a planner. It's so that's over there, so I don't have it right in front of me, so I can't refer to it. So best laid plans need to be modified a little. It's like I get the beginnings of organizational ability, but then it just sort of floats away. So seven of cups, which some people interpret as being uh, unrealistic and head in the clouds and not really seeing, you know, focused on 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 what you want, and not what you have, and all of that. I don't know. I, I'm kind of torn between that and the notion of of how do you how do you come up with a new way forward if you don't let it all just sort of like I'm saying now about Mercury retrograde, just let it all soften and let it all come apart a bit. And uh, uh, see if something else comes into play that you can you can think about and 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 consider. That's all, you know. If you don't allow yourself to dream, how do you know where to go in the future? How do you plan? How, how do you ever, you know, come up with something new? You, you know, you could be thinking about the silliest thing, and something will come to you. So why wouldn't you do this? It, it, it's just always seem like seems seems like such a negative interpretation, and I just don't buy that. So. We're good, but we'll hang on to it just in case. It's not that it can't be that, because clearly, if if we have that many tarot people talking about it that way, then then and interpreting it that way, then it must you know be that for for some people. So we'll keep it in the back of our minds. I'm just not as either or about stuff, really. I mean, sometimes, but but not 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 so much always. I like to kind of see the shades of gray here and see things from a more uh, spirit based instead of ego. Although clearly there's times when it's ego reaction that you're seeing here. We have the 10 of cups. So we have, <clears throat> you could say with the two cups, we have a run on water <laughs> and so are an emphasis on, on water element, which is emotions and empathic ability, empathy, not the same thing, by the way. Uh, although typically people who are empathic are also have great empathy and compassion, uh, but but being an empath does not necessarily mean you have empathy. Um, you could uh, be so overwhelmed by the whole experience that you become quite aloof, or you at least appear that way when you're shielding from all of it. You kind of pull back, and people feel that. And uh, so people might say, oh, well, you know, you're not particularly compassionate. What do you mean you're an empath? Well, empath just means that you you experience the fundamental emotional resonance or vibration of creation. That's what we are when we're in the astral, uh, the astral side of self or the soul side of self is just uh, uh, really it, you're, you're living in this this emotional resonance of love. And uh, that's the creation or the Christ consciousness energy that emits from source. Um, and so, so that's, it's just that some of us, when we come into form, we've elected to still feel that. And then we have to figure out what the heck that is, right? We start thinking, you know, cause we'll find a reason, right? We'll find a reason for why we feel the way we do, but suddenly you'll start feeling bad or upset or whatever. And you're not understanding that you're picking up the vibrational resonance of somebody else. If you can't attach it to something right then in the moment, or if you can't go into your memory and say, okay, I was just thinking about a really upsetting thing. If you can't draw those two connections or one of those two connections or both, you know, then it's someone else's stuff. I mean, it's really that simple. And so, so basically, um, whether this is a reading today for empaths because emotions are getting a little bit crazy out there, uh, uh, especially closer to the election, it could be uh, we're having to deal with a lot of disparate, weird, uh, uh, single-minded focuses. If you're online at all, that's a tough one. Uh, it's going to take the strength, the eighth here to, I think, get through it. But it's also going to take the, that type of strength to understand that you need to maybe pull your focus back. Uh, your, in fact, your happiness may depend on it. So number wise, and I'm going to have, I can't do this in my head. 
So we have a we have 15. Oh, there goes my thing there. So we have 15 with the seven and the eight. So that's a six energy and 10, that's 16. So that's a seven energy for, t for the cards. And so basically we're talking about uh, bringing things into balance emotionally so that we can then move forward in strength and, and harmony and, you know, less reactive. In other words, having the, the uh, reaction come from spirit. So it's not a reaction at all. Uh, it's creation energy versus reaction energy. Think, you know, the, the ego is really all about reacting, and that's the part that we need to stay out of. And right now, it just seems like it, it uh, uh, the strength to, 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 to choose a new way to let go of that which no longer serves. That's a very difficult thing for people. We tend to stay stuck in these patterns because they really don't serve us. But it's so difficult to let them go. You know, maybe the energy about them is is uh, so familiar, right, that you stay within it. So, so maybe if you have an energy growing up that is filled with conflict, perhaps you choose a partner that you can then play that conflict out some more with. Uh, and you're not even really aware of it. Suddenly you find yourself, and it's not so much that, that you are necessarily engaging that way, but that maybe the other person you're married to is, is also had similar experiences. And so you're both playing that out, and you're taking the bait, or you're rising to the occasion, or you're remaining in conflict, and realistically you look back on it, and you, you really can't find out why. You really don't understand, neither one of you, you don't understand how you got there. It just doesn't make any sense. When it's like that, it's because there's some there's some energy that you're trying to recreate, and you're allowing that to happen. And and so you just have to recognize it. And it takes understanding how emotion plays into it to 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 really understand because you're talking fear. So these are fear-based behaviors, clearly, when this happens. So let's go ahead and look at the eight. We see, like in with the magician, we see the lemnus gate above her head. I view her as the goddess. <laughs> the underlying, you know, goddess energy within us, the great mother. Taming the wild, taming the primal nature within. Maybe goddess controlling Lilith, I don't know. <laughs> But we see that the lion just loves her, doesn't he? This really is the card of spirit tempering the ego. I mean, that's really what this is. And that's really, you know, what we're talking about here is allowing spirit to inform the process, to inform the ego, so that you're not in this reaction mode all of the time. Uh, sometimes you can get into it with someone who if you were to just sort of hear their feelings, hear their resonance, feel their vibration as they're speaking, maybe they're so out of sorts and causing this because something's wrong. If you could just know that, trust me, it can affect how you respond to them. If you can think, oh, what a, what a, you know, a, you know what, then you, you've lost if you judge that person. As, as something's, you know, bad with them. They're a bad person of some kind, you know. Obviously, you know, they're just like this. Well, maybe there's something going on in their lives that's got them so out of sorts that they cannot communicate effectively with others. And they come across, you know, so out, out of control because their life is out of control. So if you could just think about that before reacting and view the person with compassion that they're struggling that if their mood is not level, if they're not happy, they're struggling. And maybe then your response to them will ratchet down what they're feeling because if you respond in kind, doesn't it, doesn't it intensify? Well, that's what this is. It's about getting all of that under control. Well, I have busied up my workspace over there and I've got no room for my tea. I have to leave it over there. Uh, but I think that that's what we're talking about, especially with emotions. I think with uh, Mercury retrograde right now, uh, again, talking about the loosening of bonds uh, of communication, but a lot of that is oftentimes emotionally based. 
um, we're never just one element. It's never just one element influencing. And so, you know, interactions with others uh, are very, uh, can be real nasty. I'm experiencing it online. I've had to either mute people uh, or sometimes block them because I just don't want them responding to me anymore, um, at least for the time being. Uh, we get caught up in emotion. We get caught up in in our belief systems. And right now, if we could just use the retrograde time to let that settle out a little bit and, and not judge everybody the minute a word begins to come out of their mouth, because people aren't even waiting to read the whole thing or to hear the whole thing. The minute you start to say a word, it's almost like they're off to the races, right? They're off and running. And the you you almost have a uh, uh, you almost have a response before you've even finished your thought, and that's how it feels. Uh, the you know the 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 horse is out of the gate. The, it, it's just it's too much before they're ready, right? They jump the gun, and that's what and that's why I'm hoping that Mercury retrograde re, retrograde can work for people. Uh, but basically, you know, we need to understand. You know, that this is about trust. It's about mastery. Again, it's about taming the ego. It's about spirit controlling the, the whole process. It's goddess power. It's unconditional love. It's about not judging the, the egoic energy that's around us and rising above it to a different frequency, not going down into it, but but raising your frequency and your vibration high enough that the only way the ego can interact with you is if it comes up to you. That's the whole point. I think that we focus in and we get into it and we want to deal with the problem. No, raise your frequency. Move out of it. Move your awareness out of it. Get your frequency high. Give it no more attention. If it's real, then it's going to come and find you and you're going to be able to transmute it into something better. But if it's not, then it's just going to go away like it was never there to begin with. Just try that even, even for just, you know, half of a day and see what happens. Especially if you're dealing with energies that are, you know, conflict oriented. Now, I think that the reason why this is viewed the way that it is. It's just that it's 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 different in other decks. Okay, it, it is. It's just how you how you can see this in non traditional decks sort of opens your eyes to the other to other possibilities with it. But because of the sketchy brown clouds, we think that it's about being unrealistic. That we're focused on things that are unattainable. But I say, why? Why would you ever think that they're unattainable? No, you might not become a millionaire in your lifetime. That's okay. But you can have things, you can learn things, you can, you know, create things. I look upon this and say, what am I going to create today? The issue here is things are so disparate, aren't they? I mean, it's all about really success and acquisition, maybe. Or it could just be scattered emotions, you know, scattered dreams, dreaming things that don't make any sense, that aren't even remotely realistic. But again, if you don't, how do you achieve anything? You know, here the family is welcoming a new sense of tradition and structure, a new sense of emotional fulfillment. We have the 10, which is um, one energy, so it's new beginnings, both endings and beginnings, but nine is really more endings. We see the rainbow above. We see the emotions all in, all in place, aren't they? All shining down upon us, all in alignment, all in balance, all integrating together in a way that, that brings hope to the situation. You see the demarcation line here. They're excited to, to move on into their new future together. The kids are dancing. And mom and dad are raising their arms and welcoming their new life. Things have finally come into place for them. And, and they, they have, they have uh, with a focus on spirit, 
the cycle of life, that lemnus gate above, the cycle of life is bringing them into that position where, you know, if we keep our if we keep our resonance high, if we keep our focus lofty, if we keep our focus on on emotionally fulfilling, on spiritually fulfillment, fulfilling, uh, intellectually fulfilling, then our will has a better chance to follow and to manifest all of that. But if all of that is centered upon the ego, you're not going to have this. Mom and dad are not going to be united. The kids are not going to be dancing because one of the parents is going to be off doing something, something else, their own thing, and not really taking care of the family. It's almost like you would you I would see these 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 people I would know that that along the way that that uh, when my kids were growing up that you wonder well why did you have kids, you know if you're going to be out doing things with your friends if you're never going to be home if you're never going to set boundaries for them why did you have kids, because I think some of them just wanted small friends I don't think that they really wanted because that's when because when I was a parent when I became a parent that's when that the time of the time began where parents decided they wanted to be their kids friends no never do that the level of entitlement you're going to create with those kids is going to be massive it's going to be unrestrained you can't do that kids have to know that there's a parent that there's an authority and that it's all not simply about what an, a, the child wants to do and how can we make that happen. No, sometimes there's just times you can't. When we raised our kids, uh, our, I, I believe that my children needed to have a voice in their, their circumstances, right? Uh, they should be able to, uh, at times anyway, especially as they got older, well, what would you like to do? What, what, you know, at, how, what do you want to see happen here? And it was either going to happen or it wasn't. But we had to be in agreement with it if because the bottom line is we were the final, you know, authority. And so if if it was no, it's no. But we listened to what they had to say. You know, we gave them fair hearing, in other words. So that's one thing. But at the end of the day, mom and dad have to be willing to make the hard decisions. And if you have to disappoint your kids, you have to disappoint your kids. It's simple. You have to teach them to uh, about that sort of thing. You have to, they have to understand that life is not always going to go their way, and they have to learn to cope with that, right? I don't know why that happened. It just, it's, like, it's like they just shirked their whole responsibilities. And, and, and the impact it had, see, on other people's kids was profound, you know, until we, of course, we pulled them out of school and started homeschooling. And that I just said, oh, the heck with that noise. That was ridiculous. Uh, but, but the bottom line here, and I think that this really has to do with, uh, I'm not going to take a, a, a fourth card or a third card. Yeah, a fourth card. I'm not going to do that. I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and take the rune. But I think that... Uh, I think that emotions are in flux right now. I think fear is at the heart of everything. Uh, I think fear over what's going to happen in the country, uh, what's going to happen, how that's going to trickle down into our lives. I think there's a lot of emotion going on. But the nice part about Mercury retrograde, even though Mercury, you know, we're talking an air planet, so intellect and communication and all of that, but emotion and communication, air and water go together or they should, and when they don't, though, then we've got to look at what's preventing that alignment. How do you bring those two things into balance? And so with Mercury retrograde, with the loosening of beliefs, the loosening of, you know, how we talk to one another, you know, maybe that focus is going to change right now. Maybe during the three weeks of the retrograde, maybe during that period, you can work with it so that you can uh, maybe loosen some of the focus that you have and the belief structure you have and then you're going to watch emotions settle maybe maybe you can hear your emotions at that point sometimes the rational side of self becomes too rational and the inner voice within you that's saying hey the intuition is saying hey you need to pay attention here you're not you're not seeing what you need to be seeing you need to allow that voice to come into play. And I think that that's what Mercury retrograde is doing for us right now. So in a sense, emotions might intensify, but in, a, in another sense, they're there on the table for everybody to see. So you have some clarity surrounding them, whereas maybe a single-minded focus prevented that. So that's all I'm saying. 
uh, again, we're not in, you know, Venus retrograde or Pisces, right? Yeah, we're not, we're not, you know, or, or, or what, what's another one? Pluto retrograde or Chiron retrograde. We're not there. We're just saying that, that if you, if you think about how all of these elemental energies combine together to then, you know, we express that in our, our experiences and our interactions, we're really expressing those elemental energies with air, you know, and mercury being loosened right now, make it work for you, make it make you see with a little more clarity, maybe let your intuition come forth a little more and 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 see if you can't maybe add a different dimension into what you're thinking. It might change everything. That's what this that's what the astrology has been saying, that things are changing right now. New perspectives are happening. Uh, reassessment. You're seeing all of that happening. And they all sort of they might be different concepts, but they all sort of are working toward the same idea that we need to take another look at what's going on, how we're interacting with one another, the kinds of things we're thinking, the perceptions that we have and that we form. How rigid are they? And were and and were they really indicative of something temporary, or are they more long lasting? And I suspect that this is all temporary, and that we just got caught up in a particular focus or a particular path, and now it's time to change directions. That's so strong in the chart that I have to think that that's what this. And if we work with Mercury retrograde, we might be able to have a bigger impact that way. And get things going in a better direction. Um, Ken asks, the seventh rune is it? Is it the seventh? No, it's the sixth rune of the Elder Futhark. Uh, Ken asks, is the torch or the light of spirit in all directions? Well, outward, but you know, in most when it's contained in other other runes, it's usually going in other all, all directions. So, but it's the expression of spirit. Now, it's not saying it's the expression of ego, it's the expression of spirit. And so that's what we're talking about here. It's having the ability to let spirit control ego. Loosening the ego's bonds over your perception and allowing, you know, your intuition to come forward. You know when something isn't wrong. Everyone does. I don't care if you're someone, even the most dense person, you know, who just can't, you know, is so focused, is so narrow that they just can't, they're not aware of anything. Even they know when something isn't right. Don't you know that now? I mean, allow that, you know, allow that to happen. And see what, uh, you know, see what that does for you. Because I really think that that uh, uh, if we let spirit inform in this case, I think we're going to come out of the other side of Mercury retrograde with a different perception about things. I, I don't know how we couldn't. So, okay, so where are my geomancy rooms? There they are. I have a black cloth on my table. It doesn't always help in the dark. So I can't always see what I'm doing in here. So I have, oh, well, that's easy, Populous. Okay. Now, <clears throat> Populous, you got two, you got Populous and you've got Via. They're the complements of each other. Today we have populace. We haven't been having that in a while. Usually if I'm going to get one of these, it's going to be via. We've got the new uh, geomancy reading for the month. It's going to come out here. What's Again, today's the 26th. We've got a few more days. We've got 29 days this month. We have a leap year. That's cool. Uh, but uh, uh, so, check, so look for the geomancy reading when it comes out over there. It's stepping aside for the next month. I've already got it uh, done. Uh, I just need to transfer it and interpret it. So it's already done. Uh, looks like we're going, the outcome on that is, is that going to be Albus? Oh yeah, so some wisdom at least. So that's good. The last month was a little weird. Uh, but <laughs> this last month was a little odd. But, but anyway, uh, we've got Populous. Now, populace is about going with the flow. It's about it's about the crowd, or it's about people. 
uh, but it's about alignment with others, basically. Now, that can be a good thing or a bad thing, you know, depending on who you're aligning with, obviously. But I think that uh, uh, it goes along with the whole idea of the loosening of the ego perceptions and moving into spirit and understanding that, that we really are one with one another. When we're not in these, you know, perceived forms, uh, we slow a little bit of our energy down. And, and, and it's a constant focus, by the way. This is not something where we're plopped out like a chicken pops out an egg. And we're left to, to fend for ourselves. And then when we die, we fold back into spirit. No, spirit is never not here. The only way that we're alive is that spirit is continually focusing us into form. Otherwise, the body would just heal over, right? So there's no reason for the body. We, we would be robots, but there's no reason for that. That's not why you know, we were manipulated and created and all of that. So, so we were, we were created to house a soul and to be magnificent and, and magnificent soul-based beings. Uh, unfortunately, we've sort of gotten the focus wrong on this. And we're so focused on the goings on of life that ego takes over. And it makes it that much more difficult to interact with one another on a soul-based level or spirit-based spirit level. But that's where we're going. It's where we've always been. We're just having to remember it right now. So it's not a question of we get plopped out, we have to do good works in order to work our way back to source. No, we never stop, we never stop being part of source. It's just that our awareness changes when we're here. And that's the part, that's, the, that's what it is we're actually working on. Because in the, in the moment of doing those good works, we remember we're spirit. We're imbued with that energy and we can't help but be blessed by that, right? So I think that that's really what we're doing here. Uh, if we let this Mercury retrograde time work for us, we can loosen the bonds of perception that have been based on ego, seeing everybody as the other, and start to view people as the other side of self with more compassion and with less judgment. You know, if someone's struggling, if someone is having such a difficult moment, it's because there's something going on with them. It's likely not because they're, they're somebody, I mean, they may in fact be dangerous, you know, so you have to be aware, obviously. But to give yourself a chance to see the true picture of, uh, or as much of it as you can see, right? Because you're not going to necessarily know what's going on with them, but just that something is. So it may inform you that you, may, you need to leave immediately, right? You may understand the true nature of this. In other words, sometimes we get transfixed by the moment and we forget to perceive what's going on. We forget to feel the energy of it. Empaths don't. We can't help it. But, you know, other people, they get pulled in by it and they watch it like, like, they, like they can't. They're it's, it's like going by a, a, a traffic accident and you can't take your eyes off of it. So much so you plow into the guy in front of you, cause another one, you know. It's that sort of focus that we can't pull back from, right? And that's, and that's the thing. If you allow spirit to inform that moment, you're going to take a moment of assessment before you jump into the fray. And maybe you realize in that moment of assessment that you shouldn't jump into the fray. That you need to just drop resistance and let that person empty their cup. And when it's empty, then they don't have anything left, right? You can fill it with something better. So you might want to take that approach to it rather than getting into it and doing this with somebody and getting into the argument. Uh, that makes no sense, really. I mean, if you think about it. And yet that's what we do, right? I mean, it's always what we do. So, again, I guess that's really all I have today. I, I, I think that, that again, we're, we're, if you find a way to let retrograde things work for you, uh, Juno is also in retrograde. So we're, we're talking about, you know, uh, uh, different kinds of relationships there uh, with people. It's a time of reassessment. It's a time to rethink the structure of our perceptions of how we see things. Um, it's it, again, it, it could be that we could see something completely different given a different setting. That's how transient perception is. It might accurately reflect what's going on, but oftentimes there's always a piece that could be added that could change everything. So if we think about it that way, then I think that we can maybe more be more open to the idea that, that, that not everything that we think is right. 
and that maybe there's other ways of looking at things, <clears throat> other ways of interacting, <clears throat> other ways of perceiving. I'm starting to lose my voice. So, again, just think about that. Think about the inner strength within that we derive from spirit and that we don't, ego doesn't, doesn't inform any of that. So, anyway, that's it. Well, I don't know about tomorrow. If I find out I have to, I get called in tomorrow, then I'll do this tonight. If not, then uh, I will see you again tomorrow. Um, uh, again, I just do this four days a week, Monday through Thursday, as those of you who have been here know. And uh, then you get three days to think about it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, no. Well, I mean, yeah, you know, maybe. Hopefully the Thursday one is is enough to, to carry you through. Uh, if not, then, uh, you know, get out your tarot deck and do your own reading and, and start to uh, uh, think about how this can affect you just going, it, it just in your daily life, even just draw one card. And all you have to do is if you draw one card, shuffle your deck, draw one card, and then and then just think about the message throughout the day, you know, and see see how it can just inform maybe how you see things. That's all this really is about. Just considering other ways of, of, of experiencing life. So generally from a place of spirit versus the usual place of ego. So in any event, check out the blog. Um, when this goes up, the correspondences will too. Uh, again, uh, I think this weekend I'll be putting up the uh, uh, monthly tarot and the monthly geomancy. That's all going to go up. Uh, I, I, may, I may do the geomancy I'm going to keep doing it, I think, the way I've been doing it, but I also might do it from a house perspective, maybe. I'll see if there's two ways. You can do a shield chart or you can do a house chart. And uh, Agrippa in the days of old would do it as a house chart, and he would put, he would draw the, the, uh, the geomancy runes out, and he would, you know, create, he would just put them in the houses. And he would interpret them that way based on house, house, uh, uh, information, but I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. I, I always want to expand it into everything else, and and it, then it gets extraordinarily complicated, and then I don't know what I'm doing. So so I just I, I do it this other way because I think it's it lends itself better to the monthly reading, if you will. Uh, the weekly rune and moon will also go up this weekend uh, for next week, um, and that's an interesting thing. So check that out. There'll be possibly a newsletter i don't know it just depends on on how, it, how i can get all this together because of the jury duty thing um it, it really whether you go or not it just it totally messes everything up so it's like you have to think about too many other things so anyway um also stay safe with the coronavirus uh, we don't know how it's going to happen in this country we know that it will uh but we just don't know how uh, we don't know how widespread or how bad it's going to be so again do whatever you can do. Wash your hands. Um, the masks may have some effect, but uh, I wouldn't depend on them. Uh, so make sure that you know if you're going out and about. Uh, if you if you see people coughing, get out of there. I don't know what else you do. You know, get something over your face, but uh, so you don't breathe any of it in. Uh, be responsible if you are ill. Don't go out if you can possibly help it. If you do, try to try to protect everyone else from you. Um, but, uh, but you know, you can always do online shopping now. You can have things delivered. So if you need to do that, get out your credit card, go on Amazon or wherever you do your shopping, Walmart, wherever, and have this stuff delivered. You don't actually have to go to the grocery store now. And let, well, there's some things you have to go for. But, but hopefully, you know, if you're feeling fine right now, go and stock up a little bit. Don't go crazy about it because other people need to do the same. So... That would be my advice for this uh, as an herbalist. Um, you know, if you decide you want to get a flu shot, if you haven't gotten one already, then I, I, I would say do that. Um, make sure that you're on uh, nourishing herbal teas to protect your, your immune system and to flush toxins from the body. Dandelion's a wonderful one. liver tea. Uh, so is uh, nettle. Um, mix them together because nettle's quite bitter. Dandelion will sweeten it up a little bit. Um, just keep things moving, lots of water through the body, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll all get through this in one piece. So um, again, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, check out the blog over at, at uh, imsteppingaside.com. It's called Stepping Aside, and be good to yourself, be good to one another, and blessed be.